Apple announced all their new software updates for WWDC this year, but out of all of their software updates, I walked away most impressed with the changes they made to watchOS 10, which is the biggest overhaul Apple has done to the watch user interface ever with comprehensive full app redesigns, a user interface with more color, a simpler home screen, and smart new changes to the user interface that utilize existing controls to give you an entirely new way to use your Apple Watch. In just my first couple of days of using watchOS 10, all of these changes added up to a bigger upgrade than any Apple Watch hardware upgrade in the past three years and it's a free software update, which is coming later this fall. So let me show you the 10 most useful changes in watchOS 10. Let's, let's roll, roll the tape. And here it is, watchOS 10 running on the Apple Watch Ultra. Now by far the biggest change that they have implemented to watchOS 10 is what they've done with the digital crown and this new smart stack view. So now when you rotate the digital crown, you'll notice you get a completely new view that was not on watchOS before. So now you can see that you still have your time in the top right, you have your date in the top left, but as you scroll down, you will start to see widgets. So you can see I have a timer widget here. As you scroll down more, my activity widget, uh, a podcast widget, calendar, news, weather, and then on the bottom, uh, some pinned apps there too. So you can see music, uh, workout, and messages. And then if you go all the way to the bottom, you can press this to get to all of the apps. Uh, but Basically, this new smart stack view is a replacement for the dock that you used to access by pressing the side button. And I think this is a better implementation of that dock concept because Apple is going to try to surface you relevant information in this smart stack view. So if there's a weather alert, maybe weather would pop to the top. Uh, if you have a calendar appointment coming up, then the calendar would pop to the top. Or if you're playing something in the podcast app or the music app, that should surface up front. Now, of course, you do have some control yourself uh, in this view mode. So if you want it to say pin a widget, well, you can do that too. So you can hold this down and you'll notice that there are options to pin the widgets. So you can see um, on the top over here, I have my activity pinned, podcast pinned, and the calendar pin. So those should always be somewhere close to the top, but you'll notice um, my timers aren't even in here. So when I set up those timers, uh, they just came to the forefront because Apple thinks that I want to interact with them. Um, now, another thing you can do, of course, is add more widgets to this view if you wanted to uh, kind of flesh these out. So if you hold that down, forgive me, watchOS 10 is a little buggy. Uh, you can see there's a plus sign in the top left. You hit that. And then, of course, you get access to all the widgets that are available on Apple Watch. So again, just scrolling down real quick, you have activity, world clock uh, right on the top. You can kind of see previews of them. And then you can go down and pretty much add anything. Uh, let's go ahead and add the workout widget. And we'll add that right there, hit done. And then you can see when I go into this view, uh, I'll have the workout app right there. So it's a quick way to access apps, but more importantly, I think with watchOS 10, it's a better and quicker way to surface information from these apps and give you a really detailed view of them. I really like the implementation of this, it really changes the way. You know, I've been using watchOS 10 for about two days now. It's really changed the way that I've used my watch. Uh, but you might be wondering, what did they do to the side button if this now kind of accesses uh, that similar area that used to be kind of, uh, you know, this space used to be used for the dock and that used to be mapped to the side button. Well, now uh, when you press the side button, you get control center. It's kind of weird, but yeah, control center is now mapped to the side button. It's been tripping me up a lot because before to get to control center, you had to swipe, but now when you swipe, you'll notice that actually just brings you back to that smart stack view. So you can either access that by swiping up or using the digital crown. But to get to Control Center, you now just press the side button and you'll notice that the interface for Control Center uh, got a rework too. So you can now see it is taking the background of my Apple Watch face and implementing those colors and blurring them out and just introducing a lot more color into the watchOS user interface. Uh, and that is a theme in watchOS 10. A lot of the apps are now full screened and they take advantage of the big, beautiful displays we now have on Apple Watch Series 8 and the Apple Watch Ultra. And there's some slight changes when you start to press into Control Center apps as well. So if you press into the battery, you can see this has been completely reworked. Most of the user interface in watchOS 10 has received a visual update that just looks much nicer. So you have uh, some really nice looking user interface elements within watchOS 10. This is by far the biggest Apple Watch update yet uh, when it comes to the changes they've made with the user interface 
it is really cool. So that's how you access Control Center within watchOS 10. Now, another important change in watchOS 10, and I really like this one, is what they've done to the home screen. So if you watch the presentation, you might not have known that they have completely revamped the home screen in watchOS 10. Uh, you might have not known that it was revamped because when you press the home button over here, or I guess the digital crown, you're probably like, what's changed? It's just the honeycomb grid of apps that we've all had before, right? Well, you'll notice that now when you uh, scroll on the digital crown, it doesn't zoom in anymore. It scrolls down. Yes, this is now kind of rearranged on the home screen for watchOS, uh, kind of like iOS. Think of it like that. You have a row of app icons and you can scroll down kind of like infinitely instead of like switching between pages. But um, the order of these apps always stay the same. So it's always uh, you know, three apps, then four apps, three apps, then four apps, three apps, then four apps, kind of gives you that honeycomb grid uh, effect, but um, you can't place apps anywhere like you could with previous versions of watchOS, and you can't zoom out of the user interface. It kind of organizes them all into a nice little list view. It's kind of a combination of the old Apple Watch user interface with the optional user interface that they used to give you with list view, which is still here. If you scroll all the way down, you can see that you can still access list view if you want. You just press that and then you get into that list view again, which works pretty much exactly. Well, I guess it is exactly the same as it was in previous versions of watchOS, but I don't like that. I like this new grid view. Uh, I think it's easier to find the apps that you want. Of course, if you wanted to rearrange them, right? You just hold down again. Uh, you can move apps around as you see fit rearrange uh, the Apple Watch home screen to your most used apps and surface them very quickly. I just think this is a much neater way for watchOS 10. And I think it's really gonna be nice uh, for users who used to be confused about where their apps were. So that's the new home screen within watchOS 10. Of course, when you go to choose an app, you'll probably notice that most of the Apple apps here have been completely reworked. So let's go ahead into activity. And this is a really good example of how Apple has been reworking apps. So when you go into activity, you'll see your usual uh, activity rings, right? But you'll notice there's changes now. Uh, in the corners of the Apple Watch uh, apps, you'll see that there's kind of like these complication views that you're probably used to um, from your watch faces. So when you hit these, you'll notice that it now surfaces things like your weekly summary. So you can see my weekly summary here. Uh, I missed my move goal on Monday. Forgive me, it was WWDC, but you could see you get access to this new view for your weekly summary uh, that really takes advantage of the bigger screens uh, that the Apple Watch now offers. Uh, if you tap on the bottom left, you'll see who you're sharing your activity with. And then if you tap on the bottom right, that is going to surface the award system uh, for the activity within watchOS. And then you'll also notice on the top right over here, there's kind of like these pages. So as you scroll down, you'll notice you get these really nice kind of full screen pages of the different stats from your activity ring. So you can see here is move. You have a little chart here. You have the total uh, move goal, 97 out of 800 calories. And then you also have the percentage of your move goal in the bottom left. And then if you wanna change your move goal, you would press that, right? As you scroll down more, you can see your exercise. Scroll down again, your stand rings. Uh, scroll down again, and you can see your today view with how many steps, your distance, and how many uh, total flights you've climbed. And then if you scroll down again, this would actually show your workout. So if you had a bunch of workouts, like if you did a run or you did strength training, those would all show up here on this bottom page. So this is kind of the philosophy in watchOS 10. I think the activity app shows it off the best where you're getting these really nice uh, apps now that give you a better view, kind of expanding the Apple Watch's screen um, from what it used to be. Don't forget, when the Apple Watch first came out, it had big bezels all around the Apple Watch. So they tried to hide that by blacking out the user interface. But now that these screens are almost near bezel-less at this point, Apple is really taking advantage of these big, beautiful screens in watchOS, and they are uh, just showing a lot more color, and I really like that. And watchOS 10 is kind of just trying to show you information, uh, more valuable information or quicker user interactions at a glance because we kind of just use our Apple Watch in short bursts. I think the Messages app is a good example of that. So if you go into Messages, you can see right at the forefront, they just show you your pinned contacts. So the people you message most, you can contact them right away. But again, you scroll down the, with the digital crown and you'll notice you get your most recent messages. So that is really cool. Of course, it wouldn't be an Apple Watch update without some new watch faces. And you can see that I am using a new one right here. Uh, and this one is called the 
palette watch face. Now, the palette watch face, I think, is kind of like the theme of watchOS 10, like we talked about before, uh, introducing a lot of color into the watch's user interface. And you can see it has this cool effect. As the second hand goes by, it changes color. And if you go over and edit this watch face, you can see that basically you have a bunch of different color schemes that you can choose from here. And they all kind of like change color uh, as time progresses. We'll choose Emerald over here. And I just think it's a really nice visually appealing watch face. Of course, there is one more watch face. Uh, so we go back over here and that is the Snoopy watch face. So uh, this is from uh, obviously the Peanuts and basically it's Snoopy. You can uh, kind of see there he is sleeping. That's like an iconic image. Oops, go back there. He's putting on the shade. So, you know, just a fun new watch face within watchOS 10. Another change in watchOS 10, uh, I'm not sure how useful this will be, but I figured I should mention it, is this new uh, area in the mindfulness app where you can log your state of mind. Yeah, so uh, listen, it's, it's, it's a little strange for me, but hey, you can hit that and then it'll ask you how you're feeling right now or you, you can log how you felt overall throughout the day. And this is supposed to help with like mental health. So I guess you can go back and like trace how you were feeling on certain days. And I think maybe Apple might give you like a report and you know, give you insights into your mental health. Uh, so if you hit log how you're feeling right now, you can kind of see, you know, um, I'm feeling pleasant. You know, we're doing a watch OS 10 video. Everything's good. Um, I am, you know, excited about watch OS 10. I am grateful, happy, joyful. I'm passionate, man. I'm passionate about watchOS 10. Uh, and I am a little anxious, I'm not gonna lie. Recording videos always makes me anxious. And, you know, I'm a little ashamed because, you know, sometimes I think I messed up in the video and, it, you know, it does make me a little frustrated too. So we're gonna log that in. Oh, and uh, yeah, what's having the biggest impact on me? Well, I would say right now that is, um, work. You know, I'm working right now making this video and let's add some context, right? Making YouTube videos for me is a little stressful. I know it's going to sound uh, dumb because it, it's an easy job or I, I assume most people think it's an easy job, but it, it stresses me out. So we log that in. And that'll be logged into the health app and I can go back and look at that and then realize uh, what's today's date on Wednesday, the 7th, that, you know, that's how I felt. Okay, and finally, I wanted to mention this. Uh, this is actually in combination with your iPhone for Fitness Plus users. I think this is really, really cool. Uh, this is something that I wanted for a long time now with the Fitness app and Fitness Plus, and that is that you can now customize and build workout plans. So uh, if you go over and hit build plan, you can kind of set like a really cool schedule here. So uh, let's go ahead and do, you know, I usually work out, well, I, I, you know, I kind of work out almost every day at this point, but uh, for weight training, I do Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Uh, we're usually in the gym. We're going to do third. We're usually in the gym. Oh, we're, we're going to say an hour. And, you know, uh, for this plan, I want to do strength training. But, you know, I need to get my core, too. My core is pretty bad. Uh, you know, I want to throw in some cardio in there, too. I'm usually a treadmill kind of guy. So let's go ahead and review that plan. And we can see tomorrow for the schedule, it wants me to do 30 minutes uh, on the treadmill and 30 minutes of strength training. Uh, and then you can actually go in and select your preferences, which is trainers. Uh, so I am a big Scott fan. I know he's on the treadmill. Where are you, Scott? There's Scott. Strength, you know, I'm going to pick Greg. And core, I'm going to pick Greg. You know, I'm a Greg kind of guy. We're going to hit update. And you can even pick music, right? You can pick music preferences too. Uh, everything rock. You know, I do like some hip hop when I'm running, to be honest. Latest hits, you know, I'm usually not a fan. Throwback hits though. That's my jam. So we hit update. And let's go ahead and hit create plan. And yeah, now I have a full workout plan here for the next four weeks. And I can go view my plan in this kind of calendar over here. So you can see, I got, I got a session with Scott on Thursday 
I got strength with Greg and I got core with Greg too. We got a double Greg workout. Uh, and then as you scroll through, you can see you got cool plans over here. So maybe I have to make a workout plan and, uh, you know, everyone, uh, who watches Greg's gadgets videos, maybe we can all do my workout plan together. Would you guys do that? Let me know in the comments below. If I make a workout plan, uh, would we all do it together? We can all share our stats or something like that. How do we, how would we even do that? I don't know, but let me know in the comments below if there's any, anyone vaguely interested in something like that. And to end it off, I just want to say, I really like the theme within watchOS 10. That is, it's not burying menus like it used to with previous versions of Apple Watch. Uh, this is going to be much more discoverable for how people can use this user interface. All the information is present. You don't really have to long press anymore to find hidden menus. And if you know, if you've used watch OS before watch OS 10, there was a lot of hidden menus within watch OS. So this kind of just brings everything to the forefront and it's a really big change. This is the biggest change to watch OS ever. And quite frankly, when I think about it from like a hardware standpoint, like this is a bigger change than we've seen just from a software update using the Apple Watch than any of the past three like major Apple Watch updates we've got. Like since the Series 6, like this is the biggest update to the Apple Watch and it doesn't require uh, purchasing a new Apple Watch. It's gonna be available uh, on every Apple Watch model since the Series 4. So I think that's really, really awesome. I really love these full screen apps. Uh, I just think they've done a great job just making watchOS uh, a much more pleasant user interface. All right, but those are my thoughts on watchOS 10. Again, this is a free update that's coming out in the fall. It's available in developer beta now, which is apparently available for free to download. You could try and find that out for yourself. But uh, yeah, I would probably recommend waiting to the public beta and I would probably even recommend beyond that, not downloading any betas on your main devices and waiting for the release of watchOS 10, which should be a free update coming out this fall. So, you know, just a couple, like five months to wait, you know, not that bad. But anyway, if you like this video and you found it helpful, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.